Greetings, friends. Welcome to Worship with First Congregational Church of Evanston, a congregation of the United Church of Christ. I greet you with joy on this, the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. We are delighted that you are joining us in this sacred space with this blessed community of seekers and searchers. As we enter cold, flu, COVID peak season, a warm reminder that masking is encouraged in the sanctuary as a practice of care for ourselves and one another. We encourage vaccinations and boosters, and if you are under the weather or have been exposed to COVID, we encourage you to stay home and participate in our worship online via Zoom. We care about your well-being, so please stay, stay safe and be healthy. To those worth worshiping with us at home, we are glad you are beginning your Sunday morning with us. Ours is a faith community that believes in God's love, grace, and mercy. We believe all people are children of God, created in God's image, and equal in God's sight. We believe God loves us just as we are, and God calls all of us, sinners and saints, to reconciliation and transformation. So no matter who you are or where you are on your journey of life and faith, you are welcome here. I invite you now to rise in body or in spirit for our responsive call to worship. We give thanks to you, God, for you have done marvelous things. Let the waters clap their hands. Let the trees dance. Let the birds sing for joy. May we remember together today and every day that you have done marvelous things.
We are imperfect. God calls us to be bold and we seek comfort. God calls us to love others and we put ourselves first. God calls us to care deeply and we choose to be numb. Let us be honest with God and each other as we speak our shortcomings plainly, knowing that our Creator hears us and will not turn away. Will you please join me in the prayer of confession printed in the bulletin? We come before you, O Lord, to acknowledge our failings. We seek your forgiveness for words spoken in cruelty, for behavior that tears others down, for failing the ministries of your church, for preferring temporal wealth to riches in your spirit. Forgive us, we pray. Redirect our energies toward the work of your kingdom. Refresh our spirits with your spirit. Renew our hearts and lead us into fullness of life. Through Jesus Christ, amen. From generation to generation, God's love overcomes human sinfulness. God is committed to fresh starts and new creations. This is good news in Jesus Christ. For our reading last week, we had a psalmist singing from the couch. This week, God's creation is personified when the sea roars and the hills sing for joy. Experience the dynamic language of the 98th Psalm and sing your own praises to God. Hear now today's first scripture. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Gary. Good morning. Hello to all the young people, all of you who are young at heart, and those of you joining us online today. It's so good to be with you. Now, yesterday, I saw a few snow flurries. Did anybody else see those? Yes, they happened. It was happening in winter is on its way. So last week, when it was in the 60s and maybe even 70s, I had heard the cold was coming. So I thought, this is my chance. I got to get out to the woods. 
So I went on one of those really warm, beautiful days, and it was maybe two or three o'clock, but because of the time change, it already seemed like the sun was really low, almost like it was about to start setting. And everything in that light looked so beautiful. That's why photographers call it the golden hour, because it just looks like everything is magical. So I stepped off of the main bike path and walked onto the little dirt path so I could get a little bit closer to the woods and the creek that was going by. And I could hear the crunch of the leaves under my feet. And when I stopped, I could hear the birds singing in the treetops. And when I got really still on a log, I could almost hear the quiet creek bubbling past. And then the loudest creatures I heard were squirrels that loved to scamper in the leaves on the ground. It was like the whole forest was singing. It seemed like the whole forest was just as happy as I was to be sitting there in that golden light. And for me, it made me want to write poetry. That's what happens to me when I go in the woods and I feel full of joy, words start coming. And so I got out my phone with all I had, and I jotted some thoughts down. It made me think of another time when the sun was really so beautiful it inspired some joy. This is about Sylvia when she was maybe two or three years old, and we woke up really early in the morning then. I bet you <laughs> know those times in the back. And our window faces east where the sun rises. And one morning we looked out the window and the sun was just starting to rise and it was like the golden hour but the morning kind. And little Sylvia looked out the window and she made up a song. She started to sing, oh glory my sunshine, oh glory my sunshine. You can imagine that that made me feel even more joyful because joy spreads, right, when we share it? In our psalm that we heard from Gary this morning, the author talks about how we should sing a new song to God. It made me think of little Sylvia and her pure joy singing out to that beauty of creation. And the other thing that I like about what the author describes is that it's a new song. It's not one we already know, and there's not one way to sing it, right? The author talks about a lyre, which is some kind of instrument. I don't even know what that is. A trumpet, a horn. It talks about the waves crashing and the earth singing. Because God has given us each our own song to sing, our own way to express joy. So maybe like Sylvia, you'll make up a new song, or like the choir and our musicians. Or maybe the way that you sing out is by writing poetry or sharing stories with someone. Maybe you make a joyful noise by giving a hoot and doing a cartwheel through the field or laughing loud with friends. However you do it, God has done marvelous things and there is so much to feel joyful about. Let's spread that joy. Let your song sing out. Let's share a prayer together. Dear God of joy, Thank you for music, the way it can lift us up and spread joy and praise. Thank you for the beauty of creation. Seeing nature, it seems easy to remember how great you are. Help me to trust the special song in my own heart and my own way to make a new joyful noise for you today. Amen. Young people are invited to head with Rhonda and Barbara to Sunday school if they'd like. And I wish you all peace. As we prepare to pass the peace this morning and in light of the rising uh, season of colds and flu and COVID, I invite you also to pass the peace this way bow, touch across your chest, or whatever you're comfortable with. But now I share with you this ancient and enduring greeting of the church. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another this morning.
Well, top of the morning to you all. Let me extend a, another welcome to you all as we gather here this Sunday at First Congregational Church of Evanston, our first real chilly Sunday that we've experienced in this new season of fall. I'm glad that you were able to shake the covers off your bed and put on your long pants and get here to church on Sunday morning. So thank you for making the effort and being with us for worship this morning. We've got a lot happening in the congregation in this season, and there's much to share with you, so I want to share with you now a few announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, you have probably seen or heard anecdotally that cases of COVID are indeed on the rise. Additionally, this is the season of cold and flus. I know my kids have gotten a series of coughs this week. That's why they're home with their mother this morning. And so out of a sense of concern for one another uh, and for the health and welfare of this whole community, we are strongly encouraging you. Let everybody wear a mask when you can. We are strongly encouraging you to take care of yourself, get that extra booster shot that you need to, uh, to drink a little extra OJ, to get good rest at night, and simply take care of yourselves. Uh, in that same spirit, we also want to acknowledge that people come from many different places, and so we offer folks choices, but please, if you can, wear a mask to keep yourself and others safe. Here's what's happening in the church. Um, first of all, this Sunday after worship, we are going to continue our conversation on reparation with round two. Uh, this is where we hope to get a little bit more down to brass tacks, talk specifically about the program called the Evanton Reparations Community Fund, our church's role and participation in it in advance of an upcoming vote that we expect to take congregationally on Martin Luther King Day in January 15th. So that will convene right after worship uh, in the chapel after we are done celebrating worship. Then we are also in the season of the Becoming the Church meetings. Uh, many of you have attended meetings this past week. We have additional gatherings scheduled for tonight at Ann Trumpeter's home, uh, for tomorrow at Sharon Fiedler's home. I think Beckler's hosting one later this week. Tuesday. Or Tuesday. So if you have not already signed up, uh, please uh, talk to one of those folks uh, and participate in this crucial conversation as we consider what God is calling our church to become. Then, um, looking ahead, uh, looking back with something to celebrate, I want to call on Lynn Ward-Page for an announcement. Thank you, Lynn, for your leadership. One last thing for next week. It is the final week of the church calendar year, right before we turn into Advent, and we have a couple exciting things happening next Sunday. Um, first of all, we will be working with the Sunday School and auditioning for the Christmas program. Woohoo! Uh, our partners from Muddle Art Theater are going to be here, and we're going to do a little brainstorming around our theme. It's going to be very cosmic in nature, about stars and galaxies spinning orbit. And so they'll be doing that work after worship on Sunday, or during Sunday school, during Sunday school time on Sunday. After worship, we're going to decorate this beautiful sanctuary and get ready for the season of Advent. So if you can stick around for a while and help hang up some garland and help this place shine, that would be most welcome. I'm not going to be around to help with any of this because I'm going into the woods next week. Uh, I'm going to go up to Wisconsin and sit in a tree for a while and uh, listen to the squirrels make noise and, and hope that a deer might walk past me. So we'll see what happens. But that's where I'll be next Sunday. The Reverend Michelle uh, uh, Hughes will be your preacher, and she is outstanding. I will not want to finish this her sermon. Anything else at this time for the people of the church? We're doing our anthem during offering, so I am now going to pivot and move up to the pulpit for this morning's sermon scripture.
got to get all of my microphones right. I'm so blessed. I have three microphones to work with up here. Isn't that something? What a lucky man I am. Our scripture this morning comes to us from the Hebrew Bible. It is the 12th chapter of Isaiah. And what's interesting about this chapter of Isaiah is it really reads just like a psalm. It's not prophetic. It's not really any of that type of stuff that we normally would associate with one of the prophets. It sounds exactly like one of the psalms. And it is indeed a song of praise for God. The God who delivers and comforts and who gives us that great phrase, with joy you will draw water. So hear now this good news from the prophet. You will say on that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away, and you comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say on that day, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Amen. So do any of you watch that show, America's Got Talent? You know that one on NBC? That uh, franchise of a reality show that spotlights Americans from all walks of life. Singing, common folks, singing and dancing spinning plates, telling jokes, making magic, all to feature the many talents of the American people. Well, it got me thinking. We've got a lot of talent here in the pews at First Congregational Church of Evanston. Of course, you know the tremendously gifted voices in our choir because you hear them every week. But did you know that we also have skilled jazz pianists? and people who can really pick a guitar. We have creative artists who paint and sculpt and melt and mold works of true beauty. In our midst, you will also find effective organizers and activists who know how to put communities into motion. We have talented teachers and effective administrators. And let's not ignore the less celebrated talents of accounting. You know, I've spent 20 years trying to figure out how to work out Excel spreadsheets, so don't tell me that accounting is not a talent. We also have many talented writers in our congregation, and one of them is a celebrated columnist for the Evanston Roundtable. You know who I'm talking about, our very own Nancy Anderson. I subscribed to the Evanston Roundtable as soon as I landed here at First Congregational, and Nancy's columns are always must-read material for this pastor. One of my favorites was a quasi-confessional piece with the headline, Let's Talk About Church or Not. In the column, Nancy shares her reluctance to talk about church, something that many of us can relate to. In this day and age when going to church can seem antiquarian or something only done by other people, to admit that one practices Christianity and attends worship can be downright countercultural in a liberal environment like Evanston, Illinois. Nancy cleverly notes that going to church on a regular basis can be equated with having a flip phone or liking American cheese. She observes that people who talk about church get lumped in with Ned Flanders or the church lady from Saturday Night Live. And yet, Nancy revels in the role that religion plays in her life, and in her columns she sings praises for her home congregation. Nancy lists the many reasons she makes time for church, saying, quote, 
I like the specified time to sit and reflect. I like pondering my own life and being nudged to think about others' lives, not just here but around the world. I like the messages at my church, which include protecting the environment, caring for others, and fighting for the powerless. I like the sense of community and the built-in infrastructure to serve. And then in a really beautiful piece of writing, Nancy reflects, quote, there is something otherworldly about the peacefulness of a church and the invitation to a sacred space. Inside of a church, I feel like I'm bearing witness to those who have gone before me. I feel like I'm part of something bigger than myself. Isn't that sweet? To read the whole column, check out the church's Facebook page where it is now linked. And Nancy, I want to thank you for letting me use your words this morning. So why the struggle then to share about something that is so special, so transcendent, and so potentially transformational? If a church can indeed offer an individual peace and joy and meaning, items that are in such short supply in this world, wouldn't you want to let your friends know about it? Or to look at it another way, if you read a book that entirely opened your mind to new possibilities, or you saw a movie that touched you deeply, or you heard a musical artist that brought you incredible joy, wouldn't you tell someone about it? Well, of course you would. So what is different about church? Why would anybody put that light under a bushel basket and keep their church to themselves? Well, you know why. Nancy put her finger on it in her column, and I for sure can tell you exactly what is holding people back from talking about their church. You want to know? It's those people. It's those people. You know who I'm talking about, right? The evangelical Christians, the fundamentalist Bible beaters, the God squad. The people who go on and on about how, on and on about God and how they are too blessed to be stressed, how they just want to thank God for this day and how Jesus had led them through the fire and praise and thanks be unto his name. And oh, by the way, have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Want to come to my church? <laughs> Those people make for a useful and convenient foil. We in the liberal mainline Protestant church are quick to differentiate ourselves from those people. And one of the ways that we do that is by zipping our lips. We don't talk about our faith. We don't share that part of ourselves with our friends, our coworkers, our neighbors. We keep that private. And in so doing, we fail to offer an invitation to this community that means so much to us. We deny those closest to us the chance to experience the light and love of God that is made visible here at First Congregational Church of Evanston. And my friends, that ain't right. Our scripture this morning from the prophet Isaiah challenges us to be bold and to step out into our faith. Isaiah begins with thanksgiving, giving thanks and praise to God for being their strength and shield. Then Isaiah pivots to the wells of salvation and with joy draws water from this font of nourishment. Isaiah declares, Give thanks to the Lord and call on his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. My friends, this is not a suggestion. 
This is not some simple pro tip or a casual aside. Proclaiming the good news of God's love is central to who we are as followers of Jesus Christ. When we are blessed and fed and supported and nourished by the love of God, our Creator, we have to make these truths known. We have to tell others about it. We have to proclaim God's name and extend an invitation to others to come and join us in God's house. This one, right here on Hinman Avenue. And experience the richness of this community and the joy of a life of faith. So how do we do this? Well, family, I confess that I too struggle when it comes to talking about my faith and my church. And I have years of seminary training and I get paid to do this, but I still struggle. But I know that it is possible. I know that we can do this. The question of how we tell our story and share the light and love that emanates from First Congregational is central to our Becoming the Church initiative. I have great confidence that this process that we are all engaged with will yield a message and will generate a movement where we can engage in a form of evangelism that truly fits with who we are as God's people. Now, in no way do I expect us to set up soapboxes in Fountain Square, nor will we deputize members of the church to prowl the purple line, praying for strangers and handing out flyers. No, there is a better path for progressive, progressive Christians to share their story. And I have seen how it works, and I can help teach us how to do this necessary and holy work. And we don't have to wait until the new year to get started. Start this week. I challenge you all to think of one person in your life and tell them about the glorious music that radiates out from the sanctuary. Share with your friend the feeling that you get when you sit in this space and the sun shines and you experience that transcendent moment of peace. Tell them about your witty, erudite, charismatic, and handsome pastor. <laughs> Go ahead, lay it on thick. I don't mind. I don't mind. I give you permission. And let them know that there is a warm community of truly caring people just waiting to get to know them because we're regular folk, just like them. Ordinary people, sinners and saints, all of us, who gather weekly to find meaning, to spread joy, to be in service, and to make a difference in this world. That's all it takes. That's what it's all about. Now believe me, if you just be yourself, and trust the message. No one is going to mistake you for a raving religious nut or some wild-eyed Jesus freak. Well, they might say that about Bob Krause, but I've got a plan for that man. I can help him. I can help him. I really can. No. In all likelihood, your friends will be touched and they will be moved. And some may even take you up on the offer and come and pay us a visit. First Congregational, we can do this. We can make God's deeds known among all the nations, or at least Evanston, Illinois. We can share the good news of God's love in a way that is authentic, empathic, and effective. We can extend an extravagant invitation to friends and neighbors to experience God's love in action compassion, and justice. So go. Go and tell it on the mountain. Or better yet, your neighbor's backyard. Good luck and Godspeed.
joy we have drawn water from the well. We have been blessed and given so much from God. So it is only right and just that we show thanksgiving, appreciation, and gratitude for the many ways that we have been blessed. For ushers, please come forward this morning for our morning's offer.
Now, wouldn't you want to tell somebody what you heard today at the First Congregational Church of Evanston? Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, choir. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Eternal God, you have created and sustained us to meet the challenges we face each day. May the gifts and offerings we bring before you reflect the light of Christ that shines in our lives. In our giving, help us act in concert with your ways that the world might see in us the power of your spirit. Please be seated. We conclude our worship this morning with our time of prayer. This is the moment to just lay everything before God everything that is resting upon your soul, the parts that want to make you sing and clap and dance with joy, those parts that trouble you and leave you uncomfortable, whatever it is, know that our God of love and mercy can take it all away and give you that which you need. This is the time when we pray together also as a people lifting up by name some of those persons we're praying for. And I want to begin this morning with a prayer of concern and a prayer of thanksgiving. Concern is for our music director, Matthew Pope. He contracted COVID this week and went into the hospital. Um, had some trouble breathing and fainted several times. He's now home, resting, doing better, but I'm sure it was very scary for him and his partner, Jennifer. So I've been in touch with both of them, offered any and all assistance that they may need, but uh, we certainly want you to pray for Matthew as well. So please keep both Matthew and Jennifer. And of course, the word of appreciation is for our dear Sharon Peter. Not many churches have somebody that can step in on a moment's notice, take over the keys, the choir, the, the organ, and do it so masterfully. So Sharon, we're grateful for you. Thank you very much. For whom else are we praying for this morning? We'll start with Betty. Pray for your friend Kathy uh, with the cancer. Um, continued prayers for my brother in law Dan, who's also fighting cancer. Um, Dan and Joy, we are now up to two new next babies. Okay. Um, two little boys, Crossy, Eli, and Gina. All of them in a couple weeks. Oh, with, all right. For the growing of families, we celebrate. Pray for Chris, uh, that God may give them strength.
for the people of Skokie, for our democracy. Amen. And I want to know how much you put into that, Gary. So you are one of those effective act activists and organizers that is a great talent. So blessings for you sharing your talent with me. Others can go next. Jennifer. Pray for your friend, uh, your cousin, Cal, uh, and also a great note of appreciation uh, for all the caregivers, not only the professionals that staff our hospitals and our nursing homes, but uh, the wonderful amateurs, uh, the family members, the friends and neighbors that show up and care for loved ones. Uh, they are a true gift to this world. In the back, sir. Prayers for James. We will certainly pray for the success of that surgery and for James's complete healing. Are there others? Seeing none, then won't you now join with me in adopting an attitude of prayer? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks that you give to us this place, this community, this moment in time that we call church. We are grateful that since Jesus sent forth the disciples out into the world that people have gathered in your name to sing your praise, to tell your story, to share your wisdom, to make visible your love. So help us, God, as we receive this great joy we experience this profound sense of community, this deep, deep love. Help us, God, to share. Help us, God, to be wanton in sharing liberally, widely, extravagantly the good news of what happens here, the delight that comes from this community, the joy of music, and the love of neighbor. So help us, God, to put aside worries about shame and judgment. Help us to step out boldly with confidence, knowing that this light is too great to put under a bushel basket, that it needs to be placed on the lampstand. This we pray in the name of God. God, we pray also this day for those many people in our midst, oh God, that are confronting the scourge of this difficult disease that has touched so many lives and taken so many from us. And so we pray this day, God, for healing and for peace. For James, for Kathy, for Don, for Chris, and for Mike. God, we pray prayers of thanksgiving for Cal that survived the accident. Prayers for all those caregivers in the world, Lord. And prayers for our communities and our nation on the heels of our most recent election. God, we are glad that our democracy has withstood this challenge. We are grateful for the citizens of this nation, the everyday folk who stand up and work and try to bring representation, not for some, but for all. So God, we celebrate our democracy in this day and ask that you continue to watch over us in the days, the weeks, and months. And lastly, O oh God, we pause now for this our time of public prayer to open wide our hearts and share with you our innermost thoughts and concerns during the time of silence.
And let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Thank you. 